We are back with my next guest. He is the investigative journalist behind a new opinion piece this morning published in The Hill. It is titled The Case for Russia Collusion Against the Democrats. Joining me right now is John Solomon. And John, it is good to have you on the program this morning. You've done excellent work on this Thank story you. we know for the last two years. I'm going to get you a new op-ed in a moment, but give me a reaction to what we just heard from Senator Lindsey Graham. Yeah, great interview. You pinned him down on something that we've all been trying to find out. Who is he going to subpoena? He mentioned a bunch of names, including everybody, James Comey and uh, the entire gang that signed the FISA. That's very important news. One name I didn't hear, but I'm curious to see if he will, will be Christopher Steele, the author of the dossier. I think that would be an interesting turn of events. Um, and, and he said whoever signed that, that FISA warrant that was done four times, that has to include Rod Rosenstein and Sally Yates to get Absolutely. subpoenaed. Absolutely. That's big news. I, I agree. What are you hearing about Michael Horowitz? The inspector general is also working on this side-by-side -side track uh, to Lindsey Graham, as he put it. Uh, what are you hearing there? Yeah. He's a great investigator. By all accounts of the people who've been involved, he's been doing a very thorough review of this FISA case. And I, I would, what I'm hearing is sometime between April and June, July time frame, he'll release his findings. And I, I would expect that those are essential to this entire narrative. And we're going to learn a lot more facts that are already out there. I mean, Mark Meadows, Jim Jordan, Evan Nunez have done a great job getting some of this information out. But there's still a lot of dark, dirty secrets that we don't know about what went on behind the scenes of the FBI. Well, we know that they um, went to the FISA court and did not give all of the information about the dossier. So right. they, they did not tell the court that, in fact, Hillary Clinton and the Democrats paid for it, and it was all political opposition research, as opposed to some real informative report. It was actually salacious and unverified, as Jim Comey yeah. said himself. So in, in terms of uh, the catalysts on this, are we ever going to get accountability? Because if you hear Adam Schiff and the Democrats on the Intel Committee talk about this, and Jerry Nadler, uh, right. They're focused on a whole host of other investigations about President Trump's tax reform, uh, tax returns. Yeah, and there's no doubt the, the accountability is going to have to come from the Senate, uh, where where the Republicans have that committee, the Judiciary Committee, it has to come from the President, who can declassify all those FISA documents. I think the release of those documents will show how much exculpatory evidence the FBI had about Trump not colluding that it didn't tell the court, and that will make this an even more serious matter. Uh, but I think it's going to have to come for those. And then, of course, the IG and the new attorney general, Bill Barr, who's the new sheriff in town soon and has the ability to start holding people to account, something that Rod Rosenstein doesn't seem to have done during his tenure. John, you're breaking some news this morning in your new opinion piece about collusion and the Democrats. I want to take right. a short break on, on that note. I want to come back and I want you to list for us where you have found collusion between the Democrats uh, and the Russians, and uh, whether or not we'll see accountability there. We're back with John Solomon, investigative reporter. And, John, tell us about your new op-ed out this morning. Yep. So I have a, a new, new article out that identifies uh, more than a dozen instances in which Democratic uh, players in the Russia scandal had contact with Russians. And I'll just use one good example. Um, a lot of people don't know this, but Christopher Steele's primary source for all the evidence that he put in the dossier, gave to the FBI, uh, was a, a retired Russian intelligence operative. Very important for people to know. He took information from Russia as a foreign agent himself, a Brit, gave it to the FBI. The FBI gave it to the court, even though it was unverified. And that's how we launched this investigation. So the article goes through a dozen of those sort of contacts. And what, what you're seeing as the evidence of Russia collusion by Donald Trump wanes and dissolves into what it was, a political dirty trick, the evidence of the Democrats working the Russians to influence the election is starting to grow. I, I understand that. Then why is it that the Democrats have been so successful in this narrative of Donald Trump has dealt with the Russians? Yeah. Well, there was a lot of media hysteria. Let's go back to the early 2017 period. All those front page stories in The Washington Post and New York Times, uh, CNN. I think we'll look back at history and look at those and see a lot of those were false or misleading, overstated. And uh, the evidence that was being leaked to them actually was uncorroborated at the time. And that got that hysteria going. It gave the Democrats a wonderful platform to launch their investigations. Uh, but now we have the, the benefit of time. And as we learn more and more information, we see it for what it was. It was a political dirty trick designed to uh, harm the election and to uh, delegitimize President Trump after the election. Your piece also goes back to talk about the Skolkovo project. I remember right. this project because I was covering it as well back in the day, in the early 2000s, when Russia wanted to become the new Silicon Valley. And they were encouraging American companies to go and share information there. That's right. uh, and, 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 you, and you say that Hillary Clinton was involved. 
She was. In fact, she was the driving force in the United States. She invited Medvedev to come to the United States and visit Silicon Valley. She arranged for several executives to go over and start sharing information with the Russians. What information were they great. sharing? You're saying this was a national security issue. I, it was, absolutely. And I think what, we, what ends up happening is a few years later, both the United States military and the FBI counterintelligence division raised warnings that this Skokovo was actually used by the Russians to bleed information of our best technology, our best military technology. So something that sounded good got Clinton Foundation donors involved. At the end of the day, it became a threat to national security, something very similar to what we heard in Uranium One. And so they, these are areas that the Republicans haven't fully investigated, but perhaps in 2019 they'll come to light. All right. We will leave it there. John Solomon, it's good to see you this Thank morning, you. sir. Thanks so much.